as her marriage began to unravel. He was a very controlling, manipulating man. Crystal's husband, Tom, made her life hell. We just knew how dangerous he was. Crystal Evans just recently divorced her husband. After attending a court hearing, her friend asked a court clerk if Crystal could get escorted to her car. They did nothing. They did not send anyone out. She walked out by herself and he shot her. Crystal was shot many times and she died. Her friends and family are placing the blame on the courthouse staff and police. My mom literally called the sheriff, um, the sheriff department the day before because he was stalking her. Um, she even showed them that the, the, t the PTO that she was granted for life Wednesday from the divorce and they did nothing. It had they had someone walked out with her, like, you know, her friend asked, she would still be here. But Georgia Sheriff Daryl Dix denied that account. He made a statement on social media that made Crystal's family and friends upset. Hey everyone, welcome to another true life story about the ultimate betrayal. This is the story of Crystal Evans, another good person who was killed by someone who claimed to love her. Please like and subscribe to our channel for more true crime cases. Crystal had known her husband since she was a young girl. When they both lived in a small town called Griffin, Georgia, they were married for over 20 years and started a contracting company during the marriage. The relationship took a turn for the worst after Crystal said she found out her husband was cheating on her with women and men. Crystal's husband threatened to kill her multiple times, and she decided to get an order of protection. She was granted that protective order on September 11th, but two days later she was dead. During the acrimonious period, here are some of the words Crystal wrote on her Facebook page. It's sad that I have to walk around, terrified for my life and my children's. I know if something happens to me, please know who did it. This man has said numerous times that he's going to kill me. I am posting and trying to leave a paper trail. This man is extremely dangerous. I have plenty of people who have heard him say this, and he's told me this too. Tom Mallory, stay away from us. You are a sick man. Leave us alone. This is sad. Please leave us alone. Dude, please leave me alone. It's over. Move on with your life. I mean, she literally called the day before because he was stalking her. Crystal's daughter, Precious says her mother was just granted a permanent order of protection against her father, Tom Mallory, on Wednesday, September 11th. But by Friday, September 13th, the day of the murder, Precious says that the two were back in court because her dad was accused of forging financial documents. Crystal's friend asked the court clerk for an escort for Crystal when she got out of court. But Precious says that never happened. Her friend let the clerk, um, let the people know, like, hey, you know, can you have someone escort her out when she comes out? Because we're about to leave. She says that the court clerk never relayed the message. She said that her mother, who was a busy real estate entrepreneur, left on her own accord. She got in her car in the courthouse parking lot. That is when her ex-husband, Tom, pulled up alongside her car and fired multiple shots at her. Um, I probably wasn't even home five minutes. You know, my godmother called me back, like, probably like a minute later. And she's like, you know, your mom is screaming. My dad had shot my mom um, at the courthouse. He then sped off in his car. Police heard the shots and chased him for a short time before he shot himself in the head. From what I have heard from the doctor and things that he is going to survive, um, he shot himself in the jaw. Precious says that law enforcement dropped the ball because they failed to protect her mother. To me, this is something that could have very much been prevented down from the judge all the way down to the sheriff department. My mom has called the sheriff a total of three times of him threatening her, him, you know, threatening that he's going to kill her. In these court documents dating back to 2022, Crystal filed two different protective orders against her estranged husband. Crystal said... Tom tried to barricade her home to keep her from leaving. He also forged a deed to her house using her stolen rotary stamp on the document. He then told her that he was going to kill her and kill himself and that he wanted his daughter to have the home when he was gone. We just knew how dangerous he was. In February 2023, Crystal filed again, claiming that Tom got a key to one of her properties and let himself in. He used a PVC pipe cutter to cut the water, power, and Wi-Fi cords, damaging the meter box in the process. That same night, 
He then slid under the house where he listened to her conversations. When confronted, he told Crystal that he was going to kill her. My mom was such a giving, nice person. There was like not a mean bone in her body whatsoever. So I just want justice for my mom where the ball was dropped. The two protective orders that Crystal filed in 2022 and 2023 were later dismissed by a judge, one of which because that they didn't show up in court. But that third one that she filed last week was granted on Wednesday. After Crystal was murdered, the Spalding County Sheriff's Department got a lot of criticism. Here is what the sheriff, Daryl Dix, wrote in a scathing Facebook post. Crystal never asked a deputy for an escort to her car. Surveillance video showed her just walking right out the door without asking for help. He also mentions that they do have a history of domestic violence, but it all lacked evidence. In the past, we have received multiple calls to the Mallory's residence. Both would claim that the other started the fights on occasions where witnesses were present and interviewed by deputies. They said that they didn't see anything or said it didn't happen like it was described by either Mr. or Mrs. Mallory. I cannot speak about a judge's decision or orders. No one is picking one person over the other or believing one over the other. Deputies don't have the option to arrest based on who has the most followers. That's not how it works. Do improvements need to be made to the law? Yes, they do. Maybe it wasn't a deputy or my agency that failed. Maybe it was the law itself. He also said, the deputies that allegedly refused to escort her are the same ones that removed her from the car, tried to control the bleeding, and tried to save her life. Hey everyone, DJ here. And I want to dive into this case and we're going to talk about a woman called Crystal Evans Mallory. And Crystal was a 44-year-old woman from Griffin, Georgia. And she had two kids and she was married to a man named Tom Mallory. And they were married for a number of years before they started having major issues in the marriage. The cops were called to their house many times. When the cops got there, both Crystal and Tom were claiming they were being abused by the other one. The cops couldn't arrest anyone because nobody had any visible bruises. So this went on for a couple of times. The cops were over there a number of times. Eventually, Crystal decided to file for divorce. And the reason she wanted to file for divorce is because she said she found out that her husband Tom was having affairs with women and men. She provided a video of somebody talking about somebody being gay. The video was very vague and it was hard to understand what was actually going on in the video. So in my estimation, there was no proof that Tom was gay. But Crystal believed that he was by all the posts that she posted. Once the marriage broke down and she wanted to get out of the marriage, Tom became abusive and um, he started stalking her and stalking her mother and, and the rest of her family and she had pictures of him outside the house and all of that. Crystal and Tom went to court and when Crystal left and she was sitting in her car, Tom pulled up alongside her in his car and shot her multiple times through the driver's side window and then he sped off. Let me tell you some things about Crystal that really stand out for me. So Crystal was a good woman. She had two wonderful kids. She seems to be a hard worker. I went on her Facebook page and I, I, I went through actually the whole year on her Facebook page trying to understand the type of woman she was. And I didn't see any anything vulgar on her page. She wasn't dressing inappropriate. She wasn't doing anything wrong. A lot of her posts were about God actually and church. She had posts about her life and her relationship. When her relationship was going good, she had posts about that. And when her relationship was going bad, she had posts about that also. And I think that's a major problem. I find people are very addicted to social media, um, put in their life on social media for no reason. I mean, seems like everybody wants to be Kim Kardashian, everybody want to have their own reality show, but nobody is getting paid for it. They're just wasting their time, posting their entire private life on Facebook. Now me personally, my life, I don't post anything on Facebook unless it's for business. I do not post, if me and my wife have an argument, I don't post cryptic messages on Facebook to get back at her. And uh, if we have a good relationship i don't post that either i don't post anything about my private life on social media because i think my private life should remain private but it's millions and millions of people think that everything they they do and should be on social media i feel like in this case this definitely didn't help crystal let me share some posts that crystal put up on august 14 she said i did not realize when being down low 
You brag on being a top or bottom man, or one holds more weight than the other. I'm so confused. Why is the one at home was always the last to know? Out here, buying men, cars, and stuff. I guess I was on the wrong team. Crystal is stating here that she found out her husband was gay, and she was the last to know. Then she had another post saying, basically tagging her husband, telling him, Go have your affairs and go with your men behind my back like you always do. Down low brother didn't want to stop talking to him when I find out. You are pathetic. Gay men behind my back. This doesn't help Crystal. Like, posting stuff online only infuriates the person that you're posting this about. The best thing would be not to post anything at all and just go through the, the court system. And if you have the means, move out from where you are to temporarily stay somewhere else. Stay in a hotel or a women's shelter or by family members that where he doesn't know where you are. And if you're a woman, I know it's difficult, especially if you if you don't have the means, if you don't have money to move out of your house. Because if you're trying to hide from someone who's threatening your life, you could potentially lose your job. If you're trying to hide from someone, you can't even go to your job because the person knows where you work, right? So if you're really trying to hide from someone who's trying to kill you, you have to basically leave your job, move out of your house, and stop your routine. Like if you have a hairdresser that you go to, you can't go there. Your whole life is going to change. And a lot of people, they don't want to change their whole life. And a lot of them, they don't know that they're in real danger. You know, somebody make a threat to you and a lot of people think, oh, they're not going to go through with it. But yeah, a lot of people do go through with it. You know, you really got to take people seriously when they threaten your life. Especially when you're going through a divorce or a breakup. And um, Tom Mallory, he's, he's, a, he's a piece of shit. Because if, if you and your wife going through a divorce... Just leave her alone. Why are you stalking her and doing all this stuff? Like, just leave her alone. And um, he decided he was going to make her life hell. And that's what he did. He dedicated his life. He didn't care about himself after that. And he decided he was going to kill her. Now, when she was in a courthouse, her friend said she asked for an escort to her car. And the cops refused. And the cops said that didn't happen. And I, I cannot agree with the cops. I doubt the cops are going to refuse to escort someone to the car if they say they're in danger. And people also are mad at the judge because when they were in court, the judge said that he's going to take Tom into custody, but he's going to give him until Monday to turn himself in instead of arresting him on the spot. Once he walked out of the courtroom, that's when he, he killed his wife. And people were blaming the judge. And I can say, let me tell you this. When somebody want to kill you, they're going to kill you. They're going to get to you. If you don't find a way to hide, they're going to get to you. If you have your same daily routine and someone is determined to kill you, no judge, no cop, or nobody can help you when that person is on the street. You cannot antagonize someone when you're going through a divorce. Now, Crystal did not deserve to be killed, okay? Nobody deserves to be killed. But Crystal did make some critical errors misjudgments by posting stuff on Facebook and social media. First things first, she should have never posted any of her stuff online. She, she definitely shouldn't have posted that he was gay. She shouldn't have posted, you know, all the, he's stalking me and all that. These things are for court. You take those things into court and you make your case in front of a judge. You don't go on Facebook embarrassing the person or, or whatever it is because that doesn't help you. If that can help you, by posting on Facebook, I'll say yes, do it. But how, how does posting on Facebook help you at all? Those people on Facebook, none of them are going to be there to protect you. None of them are going to be there to help you. Most of them are just going to be just laughing at your situation behind your back, basically. That's it. So there's no profit in posting on social media. There's none. You're basically just wasting your time. And that was Crystal's mistake. Posting stuff online to infuriate her husband even more than he was because he was mad that she wanted a divorce and now he's even more mad that she was posting stuff about him online. Whether it was true or not, I don't know if he was gay or not, but whether it was true or not, she shouldn't have posted that online. Now, the lessons in this case, if you're a woman and you're listening to this podcast is stop posting your life on social media. The world don't need to know everything about your life. Keep that private. If you want to share that with someone, share it with the people that's directly in your life. You know, your mother, your father, your sister, the people that, that you see, you should contact them privately 
and discuss that with them. Don't put it for the whole world to see. It doesn't help you at all. And when you're going through a divorce or a breakup, a lot of women have been killed in, in that critical time where they're going through a divorce or they're going through a separation or a breakup in a relationship. You have to really walk a fine line because some of these men, they're just crazy. They just decide that their life is over and they're gonna make your life a living hell and they don't care what happened to them and they're gonna take you out of the world because they don't want you to be with anybody else. They hate you so much, they don't want you to see your kids grow up. Because the worst thing you can do to someone is to kill them. You gotta hate that person to that extent. And if someone hates you that much, you gotta get as far away from them as possible. Have the least interaction with them as possible. And if somebody's making threats, whoa, you have to run, you have to hide until that kind of cool down because cops are not gonna save you. The judge is not gonna save you. There's nobody to save you but you. That's the facts. People on Facebook are not gonna save you. You have to look out for yourself. It's hard for a woman to just look out for herself in this world. It's hard, there's nobody there. I mean, if your husband is trying to kill you, who's there to protect you? There's nobody to protect you. Because if you get a restraining order, that's just a piece of paper. That doesn't stop someone from going and buy a gun illegally, waiting for you wherever they know you're gonna be, and then, and then killing you. It's happened thousands and thousands and thousands of times. I know it's not easy for women who don't have money. When you don't have money and you have a job that you can't lose, it's hard to hide. Where are you gonna go? You can't afford to go anywhere. And you end up trapped. And it's sad. These women end up getting slaughtered. And it's not right. But if you're sure that someone is gonna kill you, go to a shelter, hide. Because if you lose your job, you lose your job. You just don't wanna lose your life. Nothing more precious in this world than your life. You wanna see your kids grow up you wanna grow old on your own, you know? You wanna have the opportunity to have another relationship. You wanna be happy. And the root of all of this is finding someone who don't have that evil mentality. And I spoke about this before. Take time to know someone before you get into a relationship with them. Take time because there are signs. You just gotta look for them. You gotta ask the right questions. You gotta slow things down. Too many of us get into relationships too quickly and make a big mistake. And then you only realize when it's too late and then there's nothing you can do but hope. Listen, let me say something else. If you're a woman and someone's threatening your life, get a gun, protect yourself, get a gun. Whether it's legal or illegal, I don't care. If you know someone is threatening your life, you fear that a person is gonna kill you, get some protection. Cause listen, you'd rather go to jail for having a gun than to be buried six feet under. Trust me, protect yourself. We shouldn't be living in a world where women fear their own husbands, fear their own boyfriends. How the person you love so much turn into a stalker. Let me read one more thing here before. We wrap this up. This is a post that Crystal put online in 2020 about her relationship with her husband. And this was when things were good. We met over 27 years ago, still going only by the grace of God. Marriage is not for the weak. This year in April, we were in a terrible automobile accident that left me disabled for the rest of my life, having to even learn how to walk all over again. But this man has stepped up above and beyond his husband's duty, he have been there every step of the way, even when I have pushed him away. He even put his own injuries on hold to ensure that I was okay and got the best care possible. At the first of the year, I was planning to end our marriage, but God had something different planned for us. We have totally fell back in love with each other. And that's exactly what marriage is about, to stay together long enough to fall back in love with each other over and over again. There are going to be days that you don't like each other or get along together, but that is life. We made a commitment to each other and God. I wish and pray every marriage gets healing and patience that it may need to see it to death do us part. After listening to this post and reading up about Crystal's life, I can tell you one thing. She was a hardworking woman. She was a mother. She was a good friend. She was a woman of God and she was a good wife. When it was time for someone to protect her, there was nobody there. The man she married and hope will be her protector turned around and killed her. None of her friends were there to, to save her. There's nobody from Facebook that was there to save her. And God definitely wasn't there to save her. So if you're a woman and you read this story and you're wondering, what if this were me? Well, I can tell you that you have to protect yourself. 
You know they say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, let me tell you something. It takes a village to protect a woman. Women need a big support system. You need your family, you need good friends to be there for you. Because when you have someone that's out to kill you, you need a lot of resources. It's gonna be very difficult to do it on your own. In this case, it's very sad. I can see how this incident affected Crystal's daughter and I know she will never get over this as long as she lives. So that's it for this story. And if you have any friends or family that's going through an abusive relationship, be part of the village to help protect them, help them find a place where they can hide and um, encourage them not to post anything on social media and see if they can get you on the other side all in one piece. Thanks for watching and I appreciate all the comments. I'll see you guys in the next one.